Hello, my name is Gareth Leonard. I'm the Managing Director of Regenesis in Europe. Today I'm going to be talking to you about in situ remediation of PFAS using colloidal activated carbon. PFAS is a challenge to remediate because it tends to form very large and dilute plumes. Not only is there not much contamination in there, so it's difficult to contact, but the targets that you need to get to are incredibly low. There are limited remedial options at the moment with uh, a lot of the time people using a pump treat system where you you have to pump very large amounts of water to pull out the contamination this is then filtered using granular activated carbon or ion exchange resin um, it's an ex situ process it's energy intensive because you're running the system the entire time and you're producing waste which is then difficult to get rid of destructive technologies are being developed but they tend to be at the bench or pilot scale. So what I want to talk to you today about is colloidal activated carbon, which can provide an in situ alternative to this. So what we've done is we've milled activated carbon down to the size of a red blood cell, to the size of a microbe. So that's one to two micron in diameter, and then suspended this in water using distribution agents. And this creates a true colloidal liquid like wine, like milk, like blood. You can inject that into the subsurface under low pressure, so you're not fracturing it in. It flows through the flux zones of the subsurface and it coats the aquifer in a thin layer of activated carbon. So it allows the groundwater to flow through, but it sorbs the PFAS contamination as it moves through. Another advantage of the, the, the size of the particle is that it gives you extremely fast sorption of the PFAS because it has a very high surface area and a very short distance to the internal sorption sites, uh, allowing them all to be used very rapidly. So it's very effective. The treatment process is in situ sequestration. So what we're doing is preventing the contaminant from migrating. So here you can see it applied as a barrier at the edge of the site. The groundwater continues to move off the site, but the contamination is removed. It can be used to protect receptors. So if you have a very large plume, you might not treat the whole thing. You might just protect certain receptors. And what you're doing is you're removing the environmental risk by uh, preventing the receptor from being exposed to the environmental hazard. And that's a standard remediation approach. It's adaptable. It can be used standalone. You can use it as a barrier at the edge of the site or like other contaminants that we all deal with, it can be used as part of a treatment train. It can be used uh, combined with other technologies such as excavation in the source area or pump and treat in the source area with a, a barrier applied further down gradient. And it may be applied in future with um, destructive technologies as they are developed. It's low cost because there's a short period of time where you inject it into the surface, into the subsurface, and then it's a passive treatment. There's no machinery running, there's no operation and maintenance costs, there's no waste coming to the surface, and reapplication is only needed after many years or decades. So the sorption is a dynamic process, it's retardation. You're, you're slowing the contamination dramatically from moving through the subsurface. So if you have a barrier, say, five metres wide, you've got a flow of 50 metres per year seepage velocity, and you've got an influx of 100 microgram per litre PFOS or P4, the groundwater will, will move through the barrier in 37 days, but the P4 will sorb to the activated carbon and move through and resorb and move through and resorb. It'll take 57 years for it to get through that five meter barrier. PFOS sorbs even more strongly, so it'll take 200 years for it to get through that, that barrier. That's at 100 microgram per litre. At lower concentrations, um, it, it will take even longer to move through. So in terms of the maintenance, you'll apply the product into the subsurface. Within weeks or months, you get very low concentrations down to almost non-detect or non-detect in certain circumstances. You then have a prolonged period where there's no contamination moving off your site and you're monitoring down gradient to ensure that that's happening, just as you would do with a pump and treat system. You know when the design life of the barrier will start to run out. And so around about that period, what you'll start to see is low levels of the more mobile, less toxic short chain PFAS start to, to move through the barrier. And that's telling you it's time to remobilize the site and, and reapply. So you do the reinjection again and you get yourself 
more decades of treatment uh, and just continue to uh, monitor from there. So it's very little activity on site, particularly for these sites that such as airports and you might be on the air side, you, you really don't want to be there. You don't want to have equipment running and there's nothing coming to the surface. So it's a proven technology. We've done 14 sites to date. We've got validation data up to four years. There are third party academic papers out on the treatment. It's effective. You get rapid reductions and, and long term protection. And it's available. It's, it's not an experimental product. It's a commercial product. We can do a design. It can be delivered to the site and, and treatment can happen very rapidly. So quick, quick case study from a uh, army air base in the US. Sands and gravels with high flow. It's a uh, mixed plume of chlorinated solvents and PFAS and they're trying to prevent the contamination from going off site. The red line is up gradient, down gradient are the, are the green lines and you can see that you get a rapid reduction and then that's maintained for the, the full validation period and that's ongoing. Further activities, there has just been a third party paper produced where they've tested six different potential in situ technologies, including plume stop colloidal activated carbon. And it's really interesting read. Um, ongoing ac academic studies were involved with a, a, a number of universities in Sweden looking at, at a site there. We're dealing with the University of Waterloo, Toronto University in Canada on a bedrock treatment. Initial results are, are looking uh, very interesting there working with Princeton University who are looking at biological degradation or potential biological degradation. And we're working on commercial sites across Europe, pilot and full scale. We just completed the second application. Sorry, we're just about to complete the second application in the UK. And we've got um, applications planned for Europe and North America next year. Thank you.